Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining our webinar today on VMware Management Pack and the release of 5.3. Thanks all for joining. My name is Christian Heidkamp and I'm the uh, product manager for the uh, NICE VMware Management Pack. And I'm happy to present to you today what we've been developing over the, the last year. So let's get started. A few numbers here, because just to show you the quantities that's been addressed. First, obviously, the new features. So there's a vast amount, 20 new features, over 2,000 hours that actually went into this release of 5.3. We also had a preview cycle. So I actually see some of the, the customers that are on here on this call today also participated in the in the preview cycle of the management pack. So uh, and just cannot thank enough those uh, preview customers. So it, it really helps with feeding information back to our development team for the final GA package. So most of the issues here fixed, there are things like display strings are wrong or there's a typo in the product knowledge. Sometimes there are more affecting changes being introduced in the earlier release new features, and we have to adjust like some overrides, or we have to adjust some parameters of monitors and rules, or also eventually do some changes on the uh, .NET collector side. All right, let's see what's new. So uh, that's a that's an overview of the most, most important uh, add-ons we did, and uh, actually I will go in in depth through most of them. So just to touch base quickly on those, we have support, we have a new component monitoring for the uh, vCenter clients, data stores, we have additional monitoring, vMotion alerting, noisy neighbors, and we have a new type of topology we added. We do allow now PowerShell scripts to be used to administrate the MP configuration and there's additional reporting. These are just the, the key top items. We've got Got to drill down into the others a bit later. Okay, I'm on the next slide here now for supported vSphere version. So uh, vSphere basically consists of vCenter server and VMware ESXi host. So and uh, you see they're reaching quite far back on the 5.5. So we've been supporting like really all the also older versions of the VMware forward to also all the way to seven, uh, the, the latest release on the VA center side and the VMware ESXi server. So that's fully supported. You might wonder that there are some new features that have been uh, released at seven. We did make uh, take advantage of some of them, like uh, new API changes, but there are also other things like uh, the uh, Kubernetes support. On the SCOM side, uh, you might wonder, well, 2012 or two, well, that's a while back now with the release. Yes, it is true, but uh, we still have customers that are on that release and uh, only in a slow migration to, to later versions. We have uh, most customers 2016 or 2019. We also do support the intermediate version, although they are uh, from the short-term servicing uh, channel that's being deprecated, but uh, just to make sure that customers that go through a migration from those versions to 2019 are still under support with that version. So that's on the support side. So uh, we are part of the uh, VMware partner program. So we typically get early access to new versions and the same applies to, to system center operation managers. You might have heard that uh, SCOMS might, is, is planned to be available on Azure. So uh, when that comes true, we also will be part of that. Okay, let's move forward uh, to another feature. So uh, data stores. So uh, I spent quite some time in pre-sales calls and demonstrations for customers or also for, for new prospects of the product. This is key. For many, it's important that the data stores do perform because it's it's known that data stores latency secure if there's a problem on the back end. This, this really causes impact to applications, to VMs, and uh, eventually the whole data center. So, and also the, the end user performance and user experience is degraded and might have its uh, root cause into, into data store performance. So, um, already since earlier releases, we have the data store discovered as a separate object. So, we have a, uh, in the health, in the SCOM health model, we have a class for the data store, and you see it. On the right side here, the, the data store state view, there's a diagram view and a couple of performance views more. We uh, added storage latency monitoring with this release. This comes very seamless to use, so you can just import the management pack. It's OK, 
can be upgraded in place. So basically just import it, it moves up to the next version, adds those two views, the performance views, the rules as such, uh, to, to, uh, to the SCARM environment and the performance data comes in as you uh, as the collection starts. On the other side, we obviously have the performance uh, rules that we have previously on storage uses, capacity on provision space already in place. So uh, those performance counters will be there and just continue. Okay, we center monitoring. You have, might have seen that already in the management pack that we have the v, the v Center server in monitoring, but when you talk about the Center server, we uh, typically refer to the uh, to the Windows server that was uh, running the the v Center. Uh, nowadays, that's that's rarely around. Only very few customers are left with that. Basically, everybody's using the v Center appliance. And I would also guess this is the case in your environment. So that was very high on the on the list to to make it into this release. In V Center, we added the core monitoring of the appliance. So like uh, memory utilization, storage utilization, CPU. If the V Center appliance goes offline and falls off, obviously there are also alerts on that. That the first thing we will notice because our entry point into the VCA API will be gone and we will not receive any further data. So that it's key. But until now, we didn't know, for example, if uh, let's say the memory was uh, fully used or there was no storage left. And because of that, we had a problem on the center appliance with this addition that actually comes with the 5.3 version that's been fully under monitoring. I just added here like a little state used because there are quite a number of uh, um, mount points that are monitored on the system, on the appliance, so all of them are monitored. And I will also show that in a, in a demo in a moment. It's just to, to show that how it looks live because there are more performance counters. All right, let's go on and uh, see what's next. So vMotion, alerting on vMotion. We had minimal alerting through the integration of the vCenters alerts in the past, but to have native monitoring in the management pack, we had to add some, some new logic into the collector as well into the management packs. There's a rule that actually no alerts and uh, gives you details. And VM mode is in a cluster from, from one ESX to another. So you can actually uh, see that and trigger an alert. Right, let's move on. So um, the noisy neighbor alert. That's been requested frequently by customers. Say you have like a, a cluster and in this cluster you're running a tons of virtual machines and suddenly like one on the virtual machines starts getting very busy. Uh, high IO goes on, lots of storage users uh, in terms of IOPS is going on. So that actually, especially IOPS affects severely the, the whole of host. That means, for example, if there's a lot of copy operations going on, or the move files, especially if it's a database sitting on it and it's getting really busy, then it could affect the other VMs on the same host. Uh, you might consider to, to balance on the cluster just a bit differently. So uh, in that case, you can actually take action on that alert. You see an example alert, and I'll show you that actually also in the demos, that there's a the noisy navy kind of identified on a cluster. That's the name here. So I always call always nice member cluster, which is the name of our cluster here, which basically alerts then that there is a problem a specific VM. It identifies the VM and also gives additional information for that. So that's the, the noisy neighbor alert we've been adding. So we try to make this very performance optimal to not run like a lot of PowerShell scripts on the host, on the on the SCOM management servers, but rather do that calculation in the in the, in the .NET collector, which we are using to actually save up resources. All right, let's go on and see uh, what, what else we have. Topology discovery. So that's uh, that's something we should, should uh, I should a bit in more detail here. So the topology discovery actually is a new type of dis uh, discovery. So it's entirely new. We have like, if you like, two different discoveries now into the product. So in the uh, VMware management pack, we have really a large number of classes. So in the health model, you actually start with the host or, or actually just the data center. Then you have the uh, the cluster, the pools, the host, and later come the VMs and the uh, the network interfaces of the VM, the, the CPUs, the memory, and all the different disks and what you have. 
so and if, imagine this like a big tree. So you have the, at the root, you have the, the vSphere and the center environment, the vCenter basically from where it starts. And then you have the host and then it builds up basically. You can look at this, for example, if you open the diagram view, that actually will show the whole architecture and the hierarchy. To discover that in a traditional approach, we actually had to use quite a number of different and discoveries to build upon each other. And that was sometimes quite hard to troubleshoot if you find out that there is um, an object missing. Let's say there's a sensor missing at the host. And um, and that was so a snapshot discovery didn't work to find a snapshot of a virtual machine. With that, we actually have like a different approach. So we actually take all the information that's been uh, available from the WMI repository where it's published from the collector. And then we uh, run a PowerShell-based discovery and, and check if all the consistencies are there. And then we actually add it via class mapper into a, as, and create it as a, basically an object to actually display it. With that, we have much better troubleshooting possibilities. So to troubleshoot and uh, also to give uh, uh, the customers a possibility to granularly actually build up on the vSphere environment. So you can start with the depth one, for example, and you will just basically discover your hosts. And there are customers who are not interested really in VM information because the VM information is, is there for other means and uh, and they really like to monitor only the hypervisor data stores and so on. So that only creates a few objects in comparison to uh, discovering all the VMs. So that's basically the depth one level. And then you can actually, you see here a bit on the background, the depth, so you can actually in increase that by to two. And then it will actually start to uh, discover the virtual machines, the Ember network related objects, and uh, everything that belongs to the host. So additional information like sensors and things like come in this level two or depth two here. Then we come next and we go to level depth three. We have the snapshot discovery. And then level, uh, depth four, we actually come to the uh, related objects of uh, the virtual machines like this memory that's attached to the virtual machine and then in the last level we get like basically everything including the full detail, detailed data store architecture. So that's basically one rule that does it all if you like. Uh, if you use that rule you can basically disable all the other discoveries. There's a standard override management pack we just, uh, provide where you can switch between the uh, uh, both. Uh, just take care that you don't use both so either or so, but we have made good experience with this. Uh, after some initial uh, changes we had to do, there's uh, something called extended discovery. Just make sure that that's set to true, that we actually support it in a HA environment as well. So where we have uh, high availability configured and load balancing for the VMware management pack. So that needs to be on uh, to be true. If you use that, it's only if you have very simple single host deployment, then this can be changed. All right, so that's that's the new on the topology and uh, the discovery. The discovery really is has been giving us challenges in the past, and with this we've been able to, to make it easier to troubleshoot and narrow down eventual problems. Uh, just in, just some examples from from our support where we had problems here. Let's say, for example, if you create like a, a VM with the name of a UUID, or if you create some with some special characters in there. So then this has been failing and, and no objects been added at all. And that was very difficult to troubleshoot in the past. But now we basically have the, the tracing option. You see here is tracing um, at last point of override control parameters. You can switch that on. And in this case, then actually we'll, we'll have a detailed trace of uh, why uh, the specific area of discovery will fail. So, okay, let's go on. So uh, we have next, uh, we have the scripted uh, config, uh, configuration and uh, we actually created a, a VMware MP script PowerShell module. So that's been a request by those customers that automate the provisioning and configuration of their uh, monitoring environment. So that means like where on a frequent basis, hosts are added and removed. Um, um, and we do have customers with like uh, over a thousand hosts that are under 
monitoring. So in this case, you can imagine how complicated it is to actually add and remove them and, and maintain that list. So with that, the capability is added that uh, you can automate like uh, removal and also update of uh, of it. So you, uh, for example, let's say you, you uh, have a specific host, you don't require monitoring anymore, you can actually use the disable uh, vSphere host command lid or in fact enable it, you can get the list of it. And you can also update. There are additional ones that just put an extract on that. So the most important thing, the white paper. So uh, I've been really happy to have such a good team here that helped to put that together, this white paper. So uh, it's it's really well thought through, very the details listed. So uh, it's on the portal. So in the customer portal, so if you have a login, feel free to log into the customer portal and download this white paper. So and. Uh, this is one of the area I will not go into into depth demo uh, to show all of this, but uh, feel free to to look at the at the, the white paper. All right, let's go a bit into into lower level changes. So these are basically the, the main features uh, we've, we've covered now, and uh, now we've got a lot of smaller things I'd like to talk about. So I call them changes in the machine room. So like things you necessarily not necessarily see or notice, but there have been changes which are really helpful also on the back end from us supporting the whole product uh, from a life cycle perspective. So um, we had to put up in, uh, the, the VMware APIs.net library, so we integrated, we had to update this. So uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an update for the integration of the data collector into the vSphere environment. So uh, that's been overdue and new API integration. So it's been showing that really robust and solid. So uh, this actually just brings advantages to you to use the new API.NET libraries in this release. The only thing you notice is that we removed the uh, WSE3 dependency in it. You had in the past always to install an additional legacy component uh, to support the older API versions that's been removed. So uh, you don't need to install that anymore. So it makes things easier in the end. Is that actually uh, the deployment is even easier of the VMware management path. Whenever there's a support call open and our support team picks it up and, uh, and if it gets more tricky, they typically have to request a trace. And requesting a trace made it a bit easier to collect the trace and then also provide the trace to us. But most importantly, the information that is in the trace. We improved that, added a new mechanism to collect even more information. So we can also look at the information now that's in the collector and retrieved from the VCP API. So we can go a level deeper if you like. If you like. Um, that also actually help us to pinpoint problems like in the case the customer says, uh, well, I'm seeing in the performance graph a memory utilization of 80% of the host. But actually in the vSphere center, I only see 60%, how can that be? So uh, with that capability, we can actually go deeper and actually see the values that we get from the center and isolate the uh, different components uh, from each other to understand uh, where, the, where the problem occurs here. Next point, change the internal polling interval. This is not to be confused with the interval seconds we have at the level of the of the management pack. When you go overrides and you want to collect like a, a specific monitor performance rule in a more frequent interval, this is a polling interval. We actually pull uh, data from the VCA API. So, and uh, that's been updated and can be made configurable. So that's been added to that. So uh, self-monitoring is always key because if something doesn't work, we want that you know about that. So. Uh, that's been added. And uh, there's a last point on improved security and password credential handling. So don't, it's, it hasn't been unsecure in the past, just for sure on that. So, but we just changed a bit the way we handle it to make it internally more secure to process also for um, like say somebody that, that gets a piece of a memory or so uh, that, that uh, can't be obtained any credentials to the DBC uh, API. So, uh, I will not go into more details here, just to keep it secure. So, uh, but just be assured we're using very standard industry standard uh, encryption here under the hood, and uh, yeah, the uh, the password and credentials are are really safe. So we have a couple of folks uh, who actually tried on the other side to get the, the passwords and credentials out, and uh, 
yeah, the life is very hard on that side now. Great, so even more things. Before we go into the life environment and show you, this is the last slide, so before we go to life environment, so uh, a couple of things that are, are noteworthy on this. So um, we have a new monitor for average value of perceived drop package and transmitted package on network interfaces. So uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. It sounds as easy as here that we just add like transmitted and received packages, but no, that's actually been quite complicated. So we actually had to do a new way we collect data in a more real close real time uh, metric set and average the data across a certain interval. Uh, because in the past, we just basically took the data and forwarded it and uh, made it part of SCOM, but actually then we just got point in point data. But if this is changing many times in an interval, so let's say you have a five minute interval, you just get like one random item from that five minute interval. Is that actually average the drop package across uh, the whole interval and then give that value back? So if there's been a spike at uh, the minute two of the interval, we'll actually know about that. So that's been the real change under the hood to make it, uh, uh, make it a better monitor, so to say, uh, to present here. Next, we did some things on cluster uh, storage for space monitoring. So uh, clusters are key. So it's the same thing with the motion to enter, uh, we showed earlier. So there are a couple of things that we really made sure that we improve cluster monitoring. And uh, the VMware license monitoring, the last one is here, that uh, in case you're using um, timed license or specific license, you want to know if you are running out of licenses here, so we added that monitor as well. Um, that's the first shot, so it's just the beginning, so there's going to be more things added. But at this point in time, you actually will receive, or you can set this up for alerting to actually receive an alert on on problems in the VMware license. It's time now to actually switch to a live environment. All right, let's go over and uh, open my SCOM environment. This is uh, this is basically uh, a live, it is a demo environment. So uh, it is non-production. So in case you see a weird critical alerts on this, just know that this is in our lab where things happen sometimes. You, also do over provision our uh, host and make maximum use of memory we have available on the host so there might be a couple of alerts that are not typical to a production environment but let's see and uh, open I open the active alert view so uh, and actually indeed we do see a number of alerts here so I'll actually go a couple of through them because for those who are new they might be be not too familiar with that Actually, I sort by the newest one, and uh, yes, there's a there's a cool one here right at the top, and we talked about that. That's the the noisy neighbors, and it's uh, just secured. So thanks for somebody from my my team in the background to actually running the test case on it. So we uh, have test cases basically where we can simulate that, and uh, new things come in here. We see that actually that is the VM uh, where the noisy neighbors running on, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, it's W. 113 here, and at the same time, right now, the W113 is still busy, so it uses now a lot of memory as well. So it's probably good to have a look on that because it actually it affects the whole ESX cluster in that case. So, um, and uh, so all the details come typically in the, in the product knowledge. So, if you go open the product knowledge here, we actually do give uh, information for resolutions. So, we have updated that in the in the management pack, so we give a link to external sources and do actually uh, try to keep up with the pace of like that the VMware uh, knowledge base is updated. Before I go a bit through, further through the alerts that we have see, uh, seeing here, I actually do like to see if I can show uh, like a, an alert on the motion. So for that, I actually log into the VCA client and uh, I have a couple of uh, virtual machines here. So this is a cluster consisting of two nodes. I'll just pick like the system, the core 23 system. It's running on ESX 18 right now. So we have two clusters, ESX 18 and ESX 19. So it's, there's already a, an alert on, on ESX 18 here. So Host CPU usage is getting busy, so let's say uh, we'll, we'll move uh, the system from ESX 18 over to ESX 19. Let's go over and say, let's migrate this one here and open the migration dialog. 
Um, uh, the desk now I picked it can, it's just available on ESX 18 and there's not ESX 19 right now so for some reason that can't be migrated so I'll just pick another one see if we can migrate this one here yeah well that seems to be a, there's a if you're familiar with the, the VM bear um, DRS rules uh, in clusters they might prevent you from moving VMs to a specific host that that is set up here, so that I just have to put this one, but let's check this one. This is running on ESX 819 already, so let's check. This is core 14, it's running on ESX 18. So let's pick that one to give this ESX 18 host a bit more room, so in terms of CPU. So let's move this over to ESX 19. And well, you have two options, regular vMotion or the high prioritized vMotion, so we run that one just to get this finished in time. So we see here actually the process starting right away, uh, actually uh, relocating the virtual machines. The, uh, while the action uh, continues, we let it run in the background and uh, you should see a bit later coming uh, an alert in here on that. All right, so let's go a bit uh, through the, uh, the alerts that are here uh, while we are waiting that the alert comes in. Well, we actually see that three minutes ago, we just get like a host sensor temperature high. So it looks like we're actually putting more load on the system, the temperature rises. Uh, we can open this alert, actually get gets an alert of 50 degrees uh, Celsius that actually is, is referenced here in the, uh, what is this, the temperature threshold is violated actually. Also we uh, could go into the sensor temperatures, uh, the sensors are uh, discovered. So uh, let's see, um, so we have the, host sensor temperature, so we have the host sensor temperature here, and uh, we actually see a number of graphs here, and we could pick that specific graph to see as well how the temperature is developing on that specific host, and uh, obviously we can set a threshold that is then triggered and uh, alerts us if the temperature rises above a certain degree point. Okay, let's talk a bit about, uh, go back to vCenter. Uh, you see, we are really proud of having added that. We had to implement a new uh, um, um, API set to use that. So here we actually have the vCenter. So it's uh, when vCenter actually we added here for monitoring. And we have like, for example, the, the storage utilization now, uh, which monitor, it's like, you see, it's basically not highly, uh, yeah, not highly utilized utilized here at this point of storage. But uh, if you look, for example, at the uh, memory usage, we see actually, oh, that's already at eight gig of, of memory and it's going a bit up. Uh, uh, total uh, CPU utilization percentage here, we also see the graph, it's also not going very high. So, but we get us as a good indicator of what's going on on the vCenter appliance. Typically get frequently asked a snapshot question. So we do see a lot of snapshots on here. So we've been creating and creating alerts. I think I turned it actually off to alert right now because it's eventually quite noisy to have all these alerts on. But we have all the other items like a lot of uh, virtual disks that are discovered with the, with the monitoring and so on. All right, so we also uh, added a bit of a monitoring to uh, the event views that actually pull in events from the vCenter. So for example, if there's a problem with somebody logging on and that creates an alert on the uh, vCenter side, then you can actually get an alert triggered here so you can forward it to your ticketing system. All right, let's go back on here to the active alert state. So and um, so yeah, we'll actually have already the, uh, the uh, uh, cluster v motion alert on here. We actually see that the core 14, which we moved, was moved from ESX 18 to ESX 19. So we get that alert. So indicating us that the v motion actually takes place here. So uh, if, if this is something you want to have or not, obviously that's up to you to configure as well as the severity. So uh, it is the first step. We do actually uh, plan to have more features around that, especially uh, around the uh, DRS rules uh, from the from the uh, from the cluster, which uh, enforce, for example, VMs running on a specific node, and if uh, and for example, if a violation of the rules occurs, then we can also we plan to trigger an alert on that. 
All the other things like tasks and so on are unchanged here. So we have tasks on the right side. So if you want to shut down or power on virtual machines, update, VM tools, all that is available here on the right side, uh, right from SCAR. Last but not least, I quickly want to just, uh, touch on the reporting. So we've actually added more reports. So we uh, have reports on over and under utilization of network, of memory, CPU, and storage. So you can actually use those reports to understand uh, those VMs that are uh, over and under utilized to actually do a performance optimization or to recover uh, some of the um, uh, CPU utilization or CPU assignments to a specific VM to your pool. Due to the matter of time, I'm not going into more detail. So, um, and uh, just go back to the presentation slide. All right. So uh, we are primarily done with the live demo. I showed you what's been what's been added here. So uh, just to uh, recap, so. Um, I didn't show the license monitor and uh, the uh, cluster free storage. Some of those are under the hood and no 30 and not going into details. What you should know is that we actually provide a, product, a, a reference guide, a documentation set. And this reference guide actually lists all the monitors you have in, in the VMware management. We have also a, a dashboard view on spread up that's also a part on you know, in the, in the demo environment as well here. So uh, um, we have the, uh, the community the community dashboard that's out there. So for those who are using Scrub Up, you can actually bring that in. It's for free available. You can just pull it in and then it actually takes the information here out as well. And uh, you have different perspectives we recently added for the ESX system for the host, for example. Uh, where you have a host perspective, so you actually drill into the host, we have information on the specific host, and uh, you get all the, the, the details like memory commitment. And you see already this host and a memory commitment, this, this is something you probably won't have in a, in a production environment. So, and uh, we, uh, uh, because it's like way over committed, but uh, yeah, it's a development environment, so we never go power on all virtual machines here. So, but you see the data is available here and uh, and uh, we, uh, as we have a number of customers that using squared up on top, so take this as a information as well. All right, so I think uh, with that, we'll actually uh, finish a bit earlier than expected. Thank you for joining. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and hope to talk to you and stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs>